Many of us develop deep love affairs with celebrities throughout our lives. As such, it makes sense that we'd be eager to lay our eyes on a photo of one of our favorite Hollywood stars that shows off another side of who they are. Keep watching to see a collection of photos that does just that. John Wayne never intended to become a Hollywood actor. While John Wayne is best known for his acting, the star was far more interested in sports in his younger years. After completing high school, he attended the University of Southern California, where he enrolled in a pre-law program on a football scholarship. John was an exemplary member of the school's football team. That is, until John suffered a broken collarbone while body surfing. His injury put an abrupt end to his career, and he ultimately ended up losing his scholarship. After being forced to quit college, Wayne decided to pursue a career in acting. This photo, taken in 1930, was taken when the 23-year-old up-and-coming actor appeared in his first leading role. That was fittingly a western called The Big Trail. Although the film wasn't successful at the box office, Wayne's performance was so astounding he caught the attention of other filmmakers who saw his potential. Wayne went on to land more and more roles, primarily in westerns. In the end, he became the very personification of the Old West for many movie lovers. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Betty White and Rue McClanahan looking perfect on the set of The Golden Girls. These two stars showed the world that, much like fine wine, everything gets better with age. Along with B. Arthur and Estelle Getty, Betty and Rue starred in the classic sitcom The Golden Girls from 1985 to 92. It was a major hit with audiences and exploded into a full-on cultural phenomenon. It showed America that women who were getting up there in years still had a lot of life to live. They could still have exciting adventures, rich and rewarding careers, and spicy love lives. The Emmy award-winning series was sharp, witty, poignant, and even sexy. A few noteworthy changes were made to the show after the pilot episode was presented to test audiences. Originally, the pilot included the addition of a butler and personal chef type of character, but the show's writers realized some of the best scenes took place in the kitchen when the ladies were prepping their own meals. Initially, Estelle Getty's character was only supposed to be a guest star, but test audiences adored her so much she was made a series regular. Olivia Newton-John couldn't have cared less about what people thought of her. Olivia Newton-John was a huge star in the 70s. During that decade, she released dozens of hit songs and starred in the critically renowned musical Grease. And who can forget her appearance in 1980's Xanadu? That film might have missed the mark in some ways, but her musical contributions are what made it worth watching. Olivia, just like any other artist, has always been open to a little bit of constructive criticism. Even so, she's never seemed to care what others seem to think about her or her music. That point was made abundantly clear after Randy Newman referred to her song I Honestly Love You as boring. Newton-John replied to his criticism by saying that Newman's comment merely reflected his personal taste and that she would never sing anything that she hated. I have to like it, Olivia was quoted as saying, before adding that otherwise she wouldn't sing it. This video is brought to you by Raycon. Raycon offers high-quality, affordable earbud options. Not only do Raycon everyday earbuds sound as good as other leading wireless earbuds, but they offer the same premium quality, if not better, at half the price. They have optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. These earbuds are so comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me. Raycon's intelligently designed earbuds have been specifically modified through countless design iterations to seamlessly fit the curvature of the human ear, big or small, so they do not hurt after listening for an extended period of time. My Raycon earbuds are an everyday necessity for me. I use them when walking my dog and when doing yard work. They are sweat and water resistant and will be fine if you accidentally leave them outside and they get rained on. They offer 8 hours of playtime while blocking out background noise like no other, making it easier for me to focus on my work, hobbies, and fitness. Every pair of earbuds comes with 5 pairs of silicone gel tips, a charging case for on-the-go charging, and a charging cable cord. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash faxverse to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Jack Nicholson was terrified of Michelle Phillips' ex. When Nicholson was dating Michelle Phillips of the folk group The Mamas and the Papas, he was reportedly scared of her ex-boyfriend, Dennis Hopper. Nicholson was very into Phillips. In fact, it's clear in photos taken around that time, like this one, that he adored her. 
but he wasn't going to take any chances. Knowing that Hopper had a reputation for being a bit of a loose cannon, Nicholson apparently slept with a hammer under his pillow, just in case. George Lucas had a difficult time getting Star Wars featured in theaters. In this photo taken at the Leicester Square Theater in London, we can see that people were lined up around the block to get a chance to see the groundbreaking space opera. Star Wars quickly became a landslide hit and paved the way for the remainder of the franchise to turn into an IP that's now worth billions. Fascinatingly, however, at the time of the film's original release, Lucas and 20th Century Fox were having an incredibly hard time getting the film into cinemas. Apparently, a lot of theaters didn't want to feature the film because they saw it as a kid's movie. Those same folks must have been blown away when the film took off faster than Han Solo's Millennium Falcon. Naomi, Winona, and Ashley Judd kicking it at home, circa 1980. In the early 80s, when this family photograph was snapped, virtually no one had heard of the Judds. While the mother of the family, Naomi, was already an established singer, songwriter, and musician, she didn't make it big until she formed a mother-daughter duet with her oldest, Winona. Not long after forming that duo, the two Judds signed a contract with RCA Nashville in 1983. For the better part of the next decade, the Judds were one of the hottest acts in country music. They put out hit after hit and rose to the top of the charts while winning five Grammys and nine country music awards. Ashley Judd often tagged along with her older sister and mother on their tours, and most people simply assumed she was the untalented one in the family. In reality, however, Ashley Judd was just waiting for the right time to make her entrance. She went on to become an award-winning actress, appearing in films such as Double Jeopardy, High Crimes, and Olympus Has Fallen. John Travolta taught Princess Di a thing or two. In 1985, a handful of stars were invited to attend a White House function to share a dance with Princess Diana. One celeb invited was John Travolta, who had just a few years earlier appeared in the blockbuster hit film Saturday Night Fever. So, naturally, when the band started playing the Saturday Night Fever track, You Should Be Dancing, Travolta seized the opportunity and brought the princess out onto the dance floor. He and Princess Di's dance went a bit smoother than Clint Eastwood's, who reportedly was very uncomfortable throughout the entire shindig. Jim Morrison considered the Doors to be politicians. The Doors' lead singer, Jim Morrison, was somewhat taken off guard when the rock band's song Light My Fire shot him and his buddies straight to superstardom. And while he didn't adapt to his newfound fame very well, he took it as an opportunity to share his socio-political beliefs with his audience. In an interview with Life magazine, Morrison told the outlet he saw the Doors as being politicians. He went on to describe their concerts as being akin to a public meeting called by them for a special kind of dramatic discussion and entertainment. Freddie Prinze, Evo Knievel, Glenn Campbell, and Andy Williams used to kick it. This photograph features a rather diverse group of cool guys. Judging by their threads, it was clearly taken sometime in the early 70s. Freddie Prince was a stand-up comedian who eventually found himself with his own TV show, Chico and the Man, which aired from 1974 to 77. Sadly, the show ended after Prince took his own life. Evo Knievel was one of the 70s most famous stunt performers. In fact, his name is synonymous with feats like jumping over dozens of school buses amidst an explosion of fireworks. Andy Williams was a chart-topping singer and songwriter who put out dozens of easy-listening pop hits. Glenn Campbell was a folk country artist who found some crossover success in the 70s. While each of these men was unique, they left their mark on this incredibly influential era in pop culture. Now it's time to hear from you. Who were your favorite stars of the 1960s and 70s? Let us know in the comment section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.